ever been swarmed by bees and survived, you know it's pretty intense. But how do they not clumsily collide into each other like people do at a heavy metal concert? Incredibly, one company has figured out how to make robotic bees swarm without collision. All of that and much more coming up. The automation world is buzzing over Festo's bionic bee the world's tiniest autonomous flying object capable of swarming. Weighing a mere 34 grams and measuring just 22 millimeters in length, this ultralight marvel boasts a wingspan of 24 millimeters and precise flight control at a remarkable wing beat frequency of 15 to 20 hertz. Crafted with cutting edge generative design techniques, it maximizes maneuverability while minimizing material usage. The bionic bees engineering is impressive, but how do they not collide? We'll answer that coming up, but first it's our premier product highlight sponsored by Mauser Electronics. The Banner RP-QM90F-100L is a robust emergency stop rope pole designed for heavy duty applications. With a maximum range of 100 meters and a center mounted device, it ensures comprehensive safety coverage. Featuring latch actuation for four normally closed safety contacts, along with two normally closed auxiliary contacts, it provides reliable protection. Constructed with aluminum alloy and zinc alloy die cast materials, the Banner RP-QM90F-100L guarantees durability in challenging environments. To learn more, visit mauser.com today. Automation skills may just be the new literacy. In this spirit, we bring you David's Corner. Thanks, Andy. I love working with relays. Here I have two of the most common types of relays that we find in industry. This one is called an ice cube relay, and this one is called an octal style relay. The ice cube relay is a four pole double throw relay, and the octal is a two pole double throw, or a double pole double throw. Each one of these has a set of two contacts that are used for the coil. The coil is the energy that actuates the relay. The remaining sets of terminals are grouped into sets of three, a common, a normally open, and a normally closed. The normally open and normally closed are usually abbreviated NO and NC. So each relay, we can figure out the number of contacts that are available within the relay or available on the socket that we're troubleshooting by subtracting two for the coil and grouping the remaining sets into sets of three. Each one of these relays performs a very specific job, but they're so common in industry that it's really important to understand relays and how they work, and to be able to read those terminal numbers so that we can get a better understanding of what wires we need to test to diagnose when there's a problem. Andy, back to you. Swarming may be instinctive in animals, but replicating that behavior in automation is no easy task. So how is it done? The bionic bee swarm's autonomous behavior is enabled by an indoor locating system using ultra-wideband or UWB technology. Eight UWB anchors are installed on two levels for precise positioning. Every bee determines its position by gauging distances to the anchors and referencing timestamps. A central computer specifies flight paths for the swarm, requiring high spatial and temporal accuracy to ensure safety, collision-free flight, and account for air turbulence. Each handmade bee has an automatic calibration function to optimize its controller parameters, allowing the entire swarm to be controlled uniformly despite individual differences. That's going to do it for today. Be sure to check out all of our other Automator's Edge episodes to stay updated with the latest in control automation. <laughs>